call Halal Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai by Hashem Makakadash. Just want to share a story that was given to me in a dream, and this helped to force me to reflect on my faith. Um, there was a shack, a dirt poor shack, uh, alongside this long country road. A uh, male and female are sitting inside. Male is sitting on the bench. Uh, females on the floor tending to two ducks. They have uh, ducks are just walking around the middle of the floor. There's an open voice, and the open voice is a voice that does not proceed through a physical presence. It's just a voice that is there present and speaks to both the male and the female. The open voice asks the female to go get a few items from the store, and the voice also accompanies her to the store. The female is innocent and largely unassuming. She's unaware of the meaning of these interactions. The voice speaks directly to her about the gospel of Christ, and she understands it. She agrees with all its terms. By Christ, I mean uh, the Messiah, Yahweh uh, pardon me. But she is still, you know, concerned for the plight of the ducks. She wants to get bread to feed them. She is more uh, simplistic in a way that she looks at the world. But she accepts that uh, Yahweh Shai is her master and her lord, and that she has to submit herself to him for her safety. The male is still at the house. He is conversing with the open voice simultaneously. Um, the open voice asks him what's going to happen to those ducks. The two of them are obviously very poor. And the two ducks being their only worldly possessions of any value. The man knows that the open voice is not asking them about the ducks. He knows that he's alluding to the impending death, the eventual death of him and the woman. Um, but he's defiant. The man is defiant. He speaks not in defense of the ducks, but against the right of the open voice to take away their lives. He denies that the one who gave them life indeed should or even could possess the ultimate right to end their lives or to set the terms for their redemption or whatever goes on with their life. The open voice speaks to the male about the gospel of Yahweh. The male is in disbelief. Uh, he does not accept that Yahweh shall die for him for his sins. He does not accept his the grounds of faith as presented to him by the open voice. He objects. Uh, he says the gospel is not sound. He doesn't admit that his life could be approaching its end and against his own wishes. He wants to hope that he has some power that he does not possess. The open voice asks him, what if death is a power that holds created beings away from their creator? What if death is a realm that is ruled by a power that is merciless and cruel towards men? The male answers, he speaks from his imagination. He bargains with his speech. He makes up excuses and he claims maybe he'll be able to control his own destiny and he denies that he might need help. He will not admit that he holds no power in the realm where his life eventually would lead him, which is the end of that life. He admits finally that he does not know. He hangs his head, somewhat relieved they're relenting uh, his stubborn nature. He is now resigned to accepting that he must give his life to Yahweh who gave his life for him. 
His female companion returns from the store. She is cheery as usual, unaware of what is to come, and comforted by the conversation she had with the open voice. She bought a package of bread, and she uh, proceeds to break open the bread to feed the ducks. She shares some with the male. He takes a few bites, then he sits down on the floor next to her and feeds a piece of the bread to the ducks. All praises to Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem, the Carpenters. Of Job chapter 33, verse 14. For Yahweh speaketh once, yea, twice, yet man perceiveth it not. In a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falleth upon men, and slumbereth upon the bed, then he openeth the ears of men, and sealeth their instruction, that he may withdraw man from his purpose, and hide pride from man. He keepeth back his soul from the pit, and his life from perishing by the sword. He is chastened also with pain upon his bed, and the multitude of his bones with strong pain, so that his life abhorreth bread, and his soul dainty meat. His flesh is consumed away that it cannot be seen, and his bones that were not seen stick out. Yet his soul draws near unto the grave, and his life to the destroyers. If there be a messenger with him, an interpreter, one among, a, one among a thousand, to show unto man his uprightness, then he is gracious unto him, and saith, Deliver him from going down to the pit. I have found a ransom. From the book of John, chapter 14, verse 1, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. And that where I am, there ye may be also. And whether I go, you know, and the way you know. Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest. And how can we know the way? Yahweh said unto him, I am the way the truth and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. If ye had known me, ye should have known my Father also. And henceforth ye know him and have seen him. John chapter 6, verse 43. Yahweh shall therefore answered and said unto them, Murmur not among yourselves. No man can come to me except the Father which has sent me draw him, and I will raise him up at the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they shall be all taught of Yahweh, of our power. Every man therefore that hath heard and hath learned of the Father cometh unto me. Not that any man hath seen the Father, save he which is of Yahweh, he hath seen the Father. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, have everlasting life. I am that bread of life. Your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness and are dead. This is the bread which cometh down from heaven, that a man may eat thereof and not die. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. The Jews strove among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Then Yahweh Shai said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man, and drink his blood, ye have no life in you. Whoso eateth my flesh, and drinketh my blood, hath eternal life, 
I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me, and I am him. As the living Father has sent me, and I live by the Father, so he that eateth me, even he shall live by me. This is the bread which came down from heaven. Not as your fathers did eat manna and are dead, he that eateth up this bread shall live forever. Call the law Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai Bahashem Rakaf Kadash.